In my last video, I showed you how to set up a CloudFront distribution to serve files from your S3 bucket over a CDN. Now in this video, I'm gonna pick up where I left off and we're gonna see how to invalidate a CloudFront cache when you modify or delete a file from your S3 bucket. So if you haven't watched my previous videos, make sure you watch those first. And I'm using Express, but this also works in the exact same way if you're using something like a Next server. So right now I have my app with two posts and each of these have an image. And these images are stored in an S3 bucket right here. And when we request the images here in the image tag, we are using a CloudFront URL. And I can see that right here. So I'm gonna copy that URL and open it in a new tab just so we can see the image load from CloudFront. Now, if I go back to the application and I delete this post right here, it's gonna delete the post from the database and it's gonna delete that image from the S3 bucket. So if I refresh my S3 bucket, that image now no longer exists here. But if I go and use my CloudFront URL to request that image, I can still get access to that image because even though it's deleted from S3, it's still cached in CloudFront for 24 hours. If when an image is deleted or updated in S3, we want that update to propagate into CloudFront, we need to invalidate the cache in CloudFront. So right now, when I delete a post in my web app, I want to invalidate the cache for that image so that I'm no longer able to see that image through the CloudFront URL. So I'm gonna head over to my code right now and the code I have to delete an image is this route right here. First, I wanna find the post that I'm gonna delete in the database. So this is just an object that has an ID and the image name and things like that. Then I delete that image from the S3 bucket and then I delete that post from the database. But right here, after I delete that image from the S3 bucket, I need to invalidate the cloud front cache for that image. So this is what we're gonna do right now. And in order to do this, we first need to install the CloudFront library from the AWS SDK. So I'm gonna run npm install AWS SDK client CloudFront. And this will allow us to communicate with our CloudFront distribution from the node server. So when that is installed, I need to head back over to my source code and import the CloudFront client and I'm gonna need a create invalidation command because we're invalidating that cache using the command. And the first thing we need to do is actually set up a CloudFront client object. And this is gonna be similar to setting up the S3 client object, which I did in a previous video. So I'm gonna create a CloudFront object here. Uh, and let's see how much I can get from autocomplete credentials, access key is the access key, secret access key, secret access key. And that's actually all we need for creating a new CloudFront object. And this access key and secret access key I have in my environment variables file. This is the access key and secret access key for the IAM user that I set up for my web server. So this IAM user will need permission to invalidate my CloudFront objects in order for this to work. So we'll get to that in a moment. But right now I have my CloudFront object set up. So in my delete request right here, I need to use this to invalidate the object. So I'm actually gonna see how much GitHub Copilot will do for us because I need to create invalidation params with a distribution ID and invalidation batch. I don't want this to be random image name. I actually want this to be the name of the image and I'll come back to this in a moment. See paths is gonna be quantity one items image name exactly wow this is great i don't even need to do any work just get copilot to do everything okay so these are the parameters then i create an invalidation command from that and then i await sending that to cloudfront to invalidate the cache so let's go through this code. The first thing we're doing is setting up the parameters to invalidate something. And the thing we want to invalidate in CloudFront is this item. It's a single item and it is that image that we're deleting from S3. And we can see it's the, the same exact image that is being deleted from S3 here. Uh, the caller reference is a unique string that will identify the request that is being made. So we're going to use the image name here because if we were to accidentally create this request twice and it has the same caller reference and the same details, then CloudFront won't try and do the invalidation twice. It will know it already made that attempt and will just ignore the second request. And then the last thing here we have is the distribution ID. So I am actually gonna set that in my environment variables file and I'm gonna put that with my other environment variables. So I'll just call this CloudFront uh, dist ID. 
and put this up here with my other environment variables. And then in my .m file, I need to create a new variable for that. And the distribution ID we can find in AWS. So here I have my CloudFront distribution, here it is. And this big bold bit of text right here is the distribution ID. So I'm gonna copy that ID over here. So now if I go back to the code and we scroll down here, we are using this invalidation params object to create a new invalidation command for our CloudFront distribution. And then we're sending that over to CloudFront. So if we try this right now, it won't work because our IAM user doesn't have permission to do anything with this CloudFront distribution yet. So I need to head over to AWS and go over to the IAM console because I need to modify the current use that I have so that it has access to that CloudFront distribution. And before I modify the user's policies, I need to create a new policy. So I'll click on policies here, and then I'm gonna create a new policy. And all this policy is gonna do is give permission to invalidate the cache for that CloudFront distribution. So the service I need is CloudFront. And the action I need is gonna be in write, and it is create invalidation right here. So that's the only thing we need this to be able to do. I'm gonna add an ARN here because I only want this to be for the CloudFront distribution that is associated with this web app. So I'm gonna go and grab that distribution ID again and copy and paste that in here and click add. And that's it. Now I can add tags, but I'm not gonna add any tags. I'm just gonna go to review and then give this policy a name. So this is my InstaSAM, uh, cloud front invalidate policy. So I'll create that policy. And now for the web app to actually be able to invalidate the cache, I need to go to my web app user over here, which is my InstaSAM app, and attach that policy to the IAM user. So I'm gonna click on that. And then right here, I'll click add permissions, and then I attach existing policies directly. And I need my InstaSAM cloud front invalidate policy. So I'll select that review, add permissions, and then we're done. So now my web app should be able to invalidate the cache. So let's test this out again. I'm gonna go over to my application and here I have another image. So I'm just gonna grab the CloudFront URL for that. And I can see that I can load this using the CloudFront URL, there it is. Uh, and it currently exists in my S3 bucket. So now when I click delete, it should delete from the database. Let's actually look at the code for this. It should find the post, delete the image from S3, invalidate the CloudFront cache, then delete the post from the database. So by the time this is all done, we should not be able to access that image at all. So I'm gonna click this delete button and see what happens. And right now, everything seems to have worked. It seems to have been deleted. If I refresh the S3 bucket, that image is gone. And if I go back to this URL and hit enter to try and request it again, I no longer have access to that image because it has updated the cache in CloudFront it is no longer accessible to anyone. And again, this would have happened automatically after 24 hours, but if you want that control, if you wanna make sure that no one can access this image once it's deleted from S3, then you need to invalidate the cache in CloudFront. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. If you're not subscribed already, please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you get updates every time I post a new video like this.